So they got Peterson in left tonight. Kike Hernandez is in center, and he's fine there. And then Verdugo's in right. Remember, Puig just went on the DL, too. But let's talk about the uh, Seager. Um, he's about as tough. I, I know the Dodgers are DPK, but he's about as tough as a person to replace in the game, I'd have to think. Yeah, I, I'd say position player-wise, that was the one guy that they really couldn't afford to miss because they have a lot of depth. There's no question. But their depth extends for a couple weeks, not for an entire season. So a guy like Corey Seager... The Dodgers, I think what they do is they see where they're at come trade deadline. I don't think you go out and make a move. You have to see. They haven't played well with Corey Seager right. up this first month. And this first month, their schedule was not all that demanding. In fact, going into tonight's ball game, the only team that they played that had over a 500 record were these Arizona Diamondbacks. So they've got to get their own house in order. Once they do that, then they can explore options. But Chris Taylor is the option right now. That's where he's playing tonight, Frank. What do you see? I feel your pain. I need a hug, Frank. The Dodgers, man. <laughs> I, you know, it's just unfortunate right now. They got injuries to deal with, uh, but losing this kid is one of the faces of baseball, watching him play through the playoff effortless, effortlessly and the World Series. He's a young superstar of the game. I hate to see this happen, but the Dodgers got to find a way. They got a lot of depth. They got a lot of superstars in their roster. They collectively got to come together in that locker room and pull that rope together because... This team is underachieving right now, and everyone knows, and you're seeing Dave Roberts now trying to turn and, and twist some buttons to get those guys going. You know, and this is a, you know, obviously they're going to, they're going to, they're going to fool the offense. They're going to see, we might as well see what Verdugo, the kid, can do while he's here, right? And if he can play, I'm sure he'll play in the mix. But just defensively, I guess Kike is the best defensive shortstop they have left right now. Is that fair to say? Well, I, he's, but he's so versatile, and he has to play everywhere. And that's, right. that's the problem. Not only do you take Seeger out of the lineup, but now you thrust other guys into positions where you can't use them where you would have used them prior if Seager's out there. Yeah. So Kike may have to become an everyday guy. Or now Taylor goes here, and now that for, that to short, and then you force some outfielders to play. But as you mentioned, you find out if Verdugo... Verdugo can play. There's no question mm -hmm. about it. He just needs an opportunity. But what the Dodgers won't do, and, and they've shown this historically, especially with this front office, they're not going to go out and get held up for ransom. They will not do that. Yeah. They won't. And one thing about Taylor, right? You know, you think about the breakout year he had in center field. He is an infielder by trade. So they, it's not like they're just, they're just throwing a guy there who's never played the infield before. So um, clearly an issue for the Dodgers, who, as we said, they're not playing well. So it's like just it's just one thing after another. So, Frank, what kind of message was this year? Was this just uh, tired of the losing? Give me a feel for what the manager was thinking. I really believe, you know, all managers before spring training, they bring guys in, I mean, for big meeting and say, hey, Certain things I'm not going to deal with on the field. One is lack of hustle. One is being late. And another is being disrespectful to your clubhouse and your teammates. So what I think he was trying to do is send a message to the team. We lack of hustle right now. We're underachieving. You might as well point out the biggest star on the team at this point, which is Corey, uh, Cody Bellinger. Yeah, I mean, he, he goes after. I think he's trying to make a point just in that it's been a frustrating month. And look at I've been saying it as well. Well, it's going to turn. It's going to come. It's going to come. And this happens leading right into a big series with Arizona, who is, you know, six, seven games up in the loss column. Here comes a four-game series. The Dodgers in this situation right here are on the verge of getting, you know, beaten three out of four in San Francisco. And, and like I said earlier, the Dodgers have not played a difficult schedule. Mm -hmm. the, Arizona is the only team that they have played coming in tonight that has over a 500 record. So Doc is, is trying to maybe spark something, but I also mm -hmm. think there's an element of frustration, and it's... Look, guys, it's not just going to happen for us. Yeah. We better get our blank together now or we're going to find ourselves so far back that there's going to be no postseason. And I've been there. You know, in my, my career, when things are going bad, I've had managers try to needle me to get everybody else going. And it works from time to time. So there was nothing disrespectful about it. Doc's been around a while. Yep. Dave, I love it. The way he managed, he's trying to get a spark in that clubhouse. Yep. So whatever you got to do sometime, do it to the top players yep. because the top players will ignite the rest of the team. No, that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. We'll see if it works. Not working yet so far tonight.